Hey, what's up guys? This is uh, Tariq here and this is the run. So this is a little device I attach to the side of the treadmill and it measure the speed of the belt, the incline and your cadence and broadcast that data in Bluetooth and anti plus. So you can use it with Zwift or any other compatible app. And you can also use it with any running watch that supports these protocols. And the run device cost 100 US dollars. So I have been using it for the past few weeks and I got a number of treadmill runs. So in this video, I'll go over how to set up the device, the calibration process that you need to know about, and most importantly, does it work and who is it for? And if you find this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more content like this. The run comes in a simple box, you open it and there is a little thank you note a reminder to charge it and a confusing note about step four in the manual, but we'll get to that in a minute. You will find the run device itself, the cradle, 3M adhesive stickers, belt speed sensor stickers, and a mini USB charging cable. The run charge should last you about 12 hours of use time or a month on standby. I've charged it only once so far and it's been working since. There is no battery indicator anywhere, so if it runs low, there is no uh, yellow blinking lights or anything like that, you'll just find out when you are ready to run next time and you get on the treadmill and it doesn't broadcast any data. So just remember to charge it every week or so depending on how often you run. The installation is simple. Use the 3M adhesive stickers included to attach the cradle to the side of the treadmill. You can adjust the position of the run in the cradle. Make sure the speed sensor is about quarter inch to half inch away from the belt. Attach the belt speed sensor stickers on the treadmill's belt. Uh, it is best to use more than one for better accuracy. Just space them out about 12 to 15 inches uh, apart. To make sure it is picking up the belt sensors, you can turn it on by double pressing the white button on the back to turn it on. Then press one more time and you should see that blue light blink right to left as each sticker passes under the sensor. The sensor broadcasts the belt speed. Calculate your cadence through sensing your footfalls on the belt. Also the angle of the treadmill or the incline to calculate the elevation. Uh, you can check these values to make sure everything is correct through their app. The gym tracker which is available for iOS devices. Sorry Android. If something doesn't look right here, like the angle in my case, you can calibrate the run. And to do that, set the treadmill speed to five miles per hour and the incline setting to zero. Double tap the white button to turn it on. Then single tap the white button to get the LEDs uh, toggling once the sticker passes under the run. Then press and hold that white button for about six seconds or so. And the calibration should start and you will see the LEDs blinking from left to right for a few seconds until the blinking go back to normal and you should see now accurate speed and elevation reported. You can also calibrate it in Zwift itself, but that does not going to calibrate the incline if the incline was off. I used it primarily with Zwift and I found it to be pretty good on the speed side of things with only the initial calibration. I would say it was off by about five to 10 seconds per mile up until you go over nine miles per hour that separation got bigger. And in my case, it was reporting slower speeds than the treadmill. However, once I did the calibration in Zwift, it was a lot better at higher speeds. So I do recommend you run that calibration in Zwift as well. Also, it was ramping up to speed along with my treadmill, maybe one or two seconds late at the max. So for interval type training, it was pretty spot on. And here's a quick comparison against my stride foot pod just for the sake of comparison. Ignore the separation in pace between the two. My stride was connected to my Garmin watch and had a different calibration. And usually it reports about 20 seconds per mile slower than my treadmill. But what I wanna show here is how the run was responding to changes in speed in comparison to the stride. And as you see, almost spot on. About one or two second delay in one interval here, but overall I thought it was very good. On the cadence side, it was good during steady state runs, but during speed work, it was good during intervals, but then not sure what happened here. I did not stop running or anything. It just completely dropped the cadence during this uh, recovery set. So I'm not sure if it was a Bluetooth issue, connection issue or something else. But uh, other than that, it was pretty good. As far as elevation, it was pretty close as well. Zwift does not seem to capture negative uh, slope. 
only elevation gain. Maybe that will change in the future, but Zwift still does not show elevation gain on the screen when running. So just keep that in mind. You will see your elevation profile if you check your run in Strava or Training Peak or any other app. Okay, overall, I like it. I like that I can just hop on the treadmill and there it is there, ready to go, always ready to pair, no buttons to turn on. So do I recommend it? Yes, I would. I think it does what it's supposed to do with few quirks, but overall it performed very well. If you have a treadmill at home and use Zwift or just want to capture your running data on your watch or any other app, then this is for you. At $100, it's not cheap, especially if you can get a foot pod for half that price, but it has few advantages over foot pods at lower price point like speed accuracy, for example, and it does capture your elevation data if that is something important to you. However, if you run at the gym and don't have a dedicated treadmill, then getting a foot pod might be the better option for you. Okay, let me know what you think. Would you consider getting a device like this to capture your treadmill runs on Zwift or your watch, or would you prefer getting a foot pod? Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit the like button below, and if you have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. All right, that's all I have. Thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next video.